From the time I was a kid, it's all I wanted to do. I, I know nothing else to do. That's all I know how to do. And now I have about at least 30 people that rely on me for livelihood through the paper. And I have to make sure that the paper stays um, independent. It stays fiery, it stays objective, it stays investigative, because that's the model we create, the brand of the paper. My newspaper started as an online newspaper and we were very, very um, controversial, investigative, analytical newspaper. And we exposed a lot of people. And I decided to come back to return to Liberia in 2007 to start the print edition of the paper. But as an online newspaper, we're very we were very critical of the government. So going back home, a lot of people who we exposed decided to come after us. So my first year back in Liberia in 2007, 2008, they tried to burn my office down. They tried to sue me several times. They tried to kill me. At one time they took uh, fire bombs, gasoline and put fire and through in my office to burn it. I survived all of these things. <laughs> my first arrest happened in 2011. Two years later, I was arrested again. This time, we exposed the corruption involving the minister in the government. And it was a case of army worms. It's insects that were destroying the farms and so the United Nations and international organizations gave some money for this problem. And the money was misused. And we investigated and reported about it. The government audit office reported about it, investigated and audited. And we just reported what the audit office said. And so they came after us with a vengeance. And we were taken to court. The morning of the verdict, I went to court one morning and I saw one of the jurors discussing with the lawyer of the, my accuser in front of the courtroom. In any country in the world, that would have been mistrial or something. But in Liberia, in Africa, anything goes. So one of the jurors actually admitted that they were paid money to rule against me during the trial. The judge allowed the case to go on. The morning of the verdict, I went to the courtroom and I saw my accuser, the former minister, and his lawyers leaving the judge's office, celebrating, high-fiving, clapping. And I'm like, they've already been told what's happening. And I, at the time, I saw one of the Supreme Court justices in, in the courtyard. And I told him, I said, it seems that this case is going to go against me because these guys are coming from the judge's office. They're celebrating already like they've already won the case. He said, oh, the judge is not a bad guy. He's a good guy. And just as I predicted, the verdict came down and I was found guilty. The law says um, if you find for a, a crime, you can't afford to pay. If you can pay $25 a day, it would take me 5,000 years to pay up $1.5 million. So that's why the whole, my book, Journalists on Trial, is about the fact that I was sentenced to 5,000 years. 
based on the fact that they want to pay $25 a day. So it, it was very, very dangerous fine for me. The 5,000 year sentence is a, is a way of saying, let's put him away for good. Let's put him away for life. Because no one lives 5,000 years. We all die one day. But if you lock you for 5,000 years, that means they don't want to see you anymore. They want to bury your work. They want to bury your life. They want to bury everything you stood for in life. And that's what the 5,000 year sentence was. Uh, in prison, the conditions were very bad. Uh, it was a very small room, uh, maybe two bunk beds, and there were about seven of us in the prison, seven or eight of us in the prison. There was no flush toilet, there was a hole, and the hole had like a footprint. And that's where you shower, on top of the hole. So when you, you, when you, even when you're sleeping, the smell from the toilet hits your face. And so I got sick after a while. Although I used to sleep with a towel on my face to avoid the stench, but it was very difficult. So I got, I got typhoid, I got pneumonia, I got very sick in prison. It was very, very, you know, difficult. Not only that fighting for press freedom, it's about the way in which you become criminalized. Because you go to prison, you're labeled as a criminal. Uh, two, three years ago, I was, when I came from prison, I was offered a fellowship to go to Canada. And, and um, when I got to get the visa, the Canadian government said, you're a criminal, we can't get you the visa. So I had to prove to them that I was not a criminal. I had to give them the court documents that cleared me. And it took the intervention of the, one of the mem mem member of parliament before they gave me the visa. Once you become criminalized or labeled as a, journal, as a criminal, you become target, you become stained for life. If you Google my name now, you see I'm a criminal. It's still there because of this law. This law from 1978 that's been on the books, it labels defamation, libel, or you cannot speak against the president. And these are things that they create to intimidate you, to keep you in a shell so you cannot speak out against the government. Journalism is activism. And activism, in a way, is journalism, because the two go hand in hand. I know people say we don't take sides, but how can you not take sides when a mother is watching her kid being cut at birth? How do you not take sides when poverty is so much in the country that you have to you know, go there and see what happened to people and help them change their lives? How can you not take sides when there is so much happening in the world today that, pe that needs intervention. If the media don't report it, it becomes nothing. And it's important for us to really look at the situation of life and, and how people understand what the media does. Because now there's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's Instagram. There's so many misinterpretations of what the media is supposed to be. And there are people who use that to campaign against the media. And they use the words of Trump and all those fascist leaders who feel like they must demonize the press to make themselves feel good about themselves. And it's not a good thing for anyone who's in the media. I think we all should resist the likes of Trump. We should resist the likes of African presidents who use Trump's words against the press. And I think it's a, it's a sad day for our, our world when people are being labeled as criminals. The doctors who go to work every day, they don't get prison for their work. The engineers who go to work each day, they don't get in prison for their work. The nurses, you know, so why should the media, the press, the journalists be in prison for their work? It speaks about the state of the world today and where we're supposed to, how we're supposed to see things and you know, how we're supposed to do things.
it made me feel like all the work I, di I did was not in vain. It made me feel like everything I, I do, people are watching. It made me feel like um, the fight is not over. Um, I'm here today because I'm recognized for what I did and what I went through. But there are so many journalists in Africa that have the same problem, or worse. Um, today, the journalists in Burundi who are in prison because they want to cover a story. The journalists in uh, Uganda, in, in Sierra Leone, in, 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 in Guinea, in Ivory Coast, and other places that are in prison because they do work, you know. And a journalist is not supposed to be targeted because of the work they do. And this has been the case now, especially now with Donald Trump as president of America. All African presidents are now saying fake news, fake news, fake news, fake news. They create this uh, artificial uh, fake news to intimidate the media, to demoralize your work and make you feel like you're nothing. And we all have to keep fighting until the world understands that the media is here to help, not to destroy. The media is here to make sure that the world is a better place. The media is here to make sure that things that are held in the dark must come to light. The media is supposed to make sure that government remains open, transparent, and there's good governance. And if those things don't happen, it makes it very, very difficult for the media to operate. criminals.